Hi, I'm American breath expert Tim Huff, here to help you huff, puff, and blow your life in side of yourself to heal yourself through breath deprivation. It's my great pleasure, by invitation from Adele and Lou, to host this week's Raw Impressions podcast. And then also introduce you to give you a taste of my plan, my wholly original method to heal yourself from inside through creative breathing, <laughs> through suffocating yourself. It's good. Okay, I didn't. I didn't invite him. I didn't. This. I had a. I. I. I was talking. <laughs> I talked to Four Track Man a little bit because mm-hmm. we were talking. You know, we were kind of on the self help pip. He had Eckhart Tolle come in last time, yep. which you know there was mixed results. I would say <laughs> questionable results of that one. Okay. Um, but I did mention he was like, "Well, what else are you into?" And I said, "I'm into Wim Hof." Mm-hmm. And that's the last I talked to him about it. We didn't follow up or whatever. But now. Tim Huff. Tim Huff is here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and that's not a, you know, I'll see later on, I guess, as the episode progresses, what his actual, his actual method is. Okay. Yeah, I'm it's, curious. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to suffocate, though. I don't like that word. I don't like it either. Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, I'm... I'm not fully. I'm a I little, like to I'm, feel I'm air dubious. coming deep into my lungs and being able to release it. I like being in control of breathing. Well, I have plenty to say about Wim Hof. Uh huh. But as far as Tim Hof, Tim Huff, I don't know yet. What but, do you want to say about Wim Hof? <laughs> I, I don't. I want. I want to talk about what um, we've had like several weeks where we haven't really talked about what we're looking forward to or oh, what's going on in our lives. Checking up, checking in. Yeah, we kind of got into that uh, bake sale thing and yeah. then we didn't really follow up. You know, we like to also talk about our, our lives and I like, it's true. you know, I think people want to know what's going on with you and so. Yeah, this is actually a good time to have a check-in because we just completed, we believe, uh, five parts of a bake sale series or five episodes dedicated to bake sale. And uh, I have to say thank you to everyone. Those were very well received. Mm. It was really fun. Um, People seem to really like them. And so maybe we have some new listeners who hopefully are along for the ride today who's listening because they got here from bake sale. Um, We also just talk about our lives and what's going on. And so, yeah, it's the end of summer here for us. Uh, Hendrix started school today. Yeah, our son Hendrix. He's in high school. Started high school today. That's really crazy. Yeah, um, I am like. Lou's feeling a lot of feelings. I'm like, I'm tweaked. Understandably. I'm tweaked. Understandably. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like feeling. It's his little boy so many... all grows up. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard not to uh, project yourself into the, the, the bodies and minds of your children. Hmm. And sort of, because I mean, that was a very, high school was a very. I mean, it was, it's, it's like, weird being brought back to it. I've been thinking about high school a lot yeah, too. It's like a total this looming blackout time for me. Like, and I just, I did not, I mean, I thrived internally and that's when I developed my love of music. And also the, I developed the routines and habits around creativity that, you know, sustain me to this day mm. during high school, really, if I think about it. But other than that, it was like real, just a real blackout of knowledge. It was totally an anti, I was antisocial. Mm-hmm. I was very isolated and in, in my own brain. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it seemed like the longest fucking time ever. It seemed like yeah. the most just excruciating, protracted, haunted period of my life. Wow. Yeah. The good old days when times were bad. Yeah. To quote Dolly Parton. Um, it's, I totally hear you. My high school, I did not also have that like high school experience where like, those were the best days of my life. You know, I was, as soon as that could be in the rear view mirror, the better. You know, I, I have one memory. I don't, I probably told you there was, I remember very little from high school. Mm. Very little. Um, 
But I remember senior year, I think the kid's name was Aaron. Mm-hmm. Turns, he sat in front of me in homeroom, turns around, he goes like, what's up, Blue? This is the best time of our lives. <laughs> and I was How like, funny. and I just remember thinking, this is not the best time of my life. The best times are coming. My Aaron. best times are coming. Yeah. Respectfully, Aaron. I liked Aaron right. quite a bit. It seemed like a very friendly Aaron, person. Aaron, what are you up to now? I hope um, the be- that wasn't the best time of your life. I'm like, I hope Whoa. you're still alive and well. And then like the, the class song was a, a Billy Joel song called I've Loved These Days. Really? Yeah. I've loved these days. I mean, I'm like, I <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I did, don't know. So I'm feeling the winds of change, the time, the shifting of seasons or summers winding down. High school begins. Izzy's going into third grade. Um, you know, we just had her conference what yesterday or something, and I don't know. So we're just kind of like in this transitional shift week where we're kind of hovering, right? It's like Lou's getting ready to leave on a pretty big tour, the Weezer Flaming Lips Dinosaur Junior. It's kind of the biggest, tour. longest tour I've been on in kind of a long time. It is. It's true. It's over. It's like a month and a half. Six weeks, I think. Yeah. Six solid weeks at least. And um, yeah, and then I'm kind of gearing up for like a long time without my partner, you know, without my right hand man here. And so that's hard. And presents challenges and it presents a lot of pre-gaming you know I have to kind of think about what the fall entails what I gotta do um you know what's ironic about today a lot. yeah we both slept we got a really good night's sleep last night that was such a weird night I it was like the longest sleep yeah and um but somehow when I woke up I felt like unsettled uh-huh and I'm mad because you know like we you know, we've been changing our lifestyle a bit mm-hmm. here at the Raw Impressions headquarters. You know, we're fine tuning. I'm going in, you know, it's my 58th year on earth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, maybe, um, we're wine. becoming healthier. Creatures. Yeah. I'm not going to drink wine. You know, they tell you when you don't drink wine, you know, <laughs> every night that it mm-hmm. improves your sleep and just makes everything better. And, uh, you know, we've been really good. Yeah. And, uh, but last night, you know, like waking up kind of feeling unsettled and then almost like angry during mm. the day. It makes me, it, it makes me angry. It's like, look, I'm living clean. It was a clean night last night and I got a lot of sleep. Why? Why do I feel irritated? Why do I feel irritated and unsettled? I know. I, I've been feeling kind of irritable too. And I, I, I keep thinking mine's perimenopause <laughs> because everything I read about it's like <laughs> something's going like it. Are you feeling rage? <laughs> you must be in perimenopause, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's it. That's me. I don't know. And it is. It's like I'm, yeah, like real talk. I'm possibly going through the stages of menopause, perimenopause. I don't know. I'm definitely going through something because, you know, um, anyway. I'm going to interject yeah. something stupid again. Okay. Um, perimenopause would be an excellent punk rock name. Like, <laughs> a lot of early yeah. punk rockers had names like, uh, you know, Johnny Rotten is the most obvious example. Mm-hmm. There's many, many Perimenopause others. would be a really great band But peri- yeah. perimenopause. Mm-hmm. Polystyrene. Would be a really good, like lead singer for a band. <laughs> Lux Interior. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm very anyway. much living in it right now. So, um, dying of cancer. I don't know. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of unsettled. I leaving depression. There's been some depression, kind of waves of it coming in, coming out. Um, it's been flirting with me a little bit. Flirting. <laughs> My depression's been flirting with me. How does it do that? Uh, you know, it's kind of like coming in and making itself known, but then going away. You know, and I'm like, what? What was I mean, like that? It's it's saying like. Do you really feel like doing anything today, Adele? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I guess what I mean when I say flirting is I don't mean I'm I'm not sitting in the well of it right now. I'm saying it's kind of fleeting. It's coming and going. It's like it's um, lur- lurking in the periphery. It's lurking around, and which is also not unusual. Again, at the end of the season, going into fall, I do tend to have a dip, a mental health dip. I don't know if anyone else who, you know, has like a lifelong person living with 
depression, anxiety, if you have dips or you notice certain times or there's a dip, um, I kind of notice a pattern like a dip, especially also before big changes. And this is like a big change with like fall school tour, you know, et cetera. I tend to, I mean, this morning, feel um, it in my chest. And you were telling me about how you felt this morning. And my first reaction was, Hey, get psyched. You're going to the fair next week. <laughs> and I, and then as soon as I said that, and I looked at your response to it, you were like, duh, motherfucker. I just don't feel great today. Yeah. But we are going to the fair. And I am the Minnesota really State excited fair. about that, actually. Yeah. Um, but that's not a panacea. This is not like right. the things that we are looking forward to. And there are things we are looking forward to. Yes, that, very much. You know, the tour is going to be, going to be interesting. And Yeah. But, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he keeps coughing, too. Tim Huff. Tim. <laughs> What's he huffing? Breathe in, breathe out. No pause between inhalation and exhalation. Hmm. Into the belly, into the chest, and let go. Make it circular. Go with the flow. Go with the breath. I thought you were supposed to breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. Just keep on going. <laughs> Is that just in Pilates? Like a wave. <laughs> You know, it changes. It seems to change a lot. Is that just when you're doing Pilates? Initially with Wim Hof. Mm -hmm. And he's actually, look, Tim is like ripping off. This is like, this is Wim's app, basically. All <laughs> that is exactly lifted from Wim Hof's app. Uh -huh. His breathing app, which I followed for like six months. Hold your breath from now on, <laughs> but not forever. <laughs> Let the body do what the body is capable of doing. Hmm. Be aware of your heartbeat. Let the feeling spread down. Feel. I feel like Become I'm in a sci-fi movie. Become aware of your body. Swim Hoff going to come after your us? Your hands and your feet are tingling. But don't worry. Relax. Purple, blues, and yellow cluster behind your eyelids. It's not a black glove over your mouth. It's just you and your will to heal. One minute. Keep what is over my mouth? <laughs> you're inside. Deep inside yourself. I think he said black glove. That makes me really uncomfortable. Distorted faces <laughs> in the periphery converging. It's you. Your past and your uncertain future. Your heart is still beating. Keep holding your breath till you understand the fragility of life. You could pass out. Don't <laughs> worry. You'll simply awake later, oh, confused, God. with a terrible headache. Bring yourself to your fucking knees. Two minutes. Is this really helping? Okay. You've given up. You're breathing again. Good God. That's nothing like Trigger Wim warning. Huff. This is not an instructional manual. Do not follow I, Tim Huff. Well, it was, it was exactly like Wim Hof. following him into a bad place. Well, what you do is you, you, you take, like for Wim Hof, it's like 30 breaths in and out quickly. Okay. Um, however you choose. He really leaves it open. open. And then... Then on your 30th... I respect that. On your 30th breath, you exhale and then you hold. Like hold the exhale? So you, you exhale and you're like... And then hold. Okay. And then you hold your breath as long as you can. And he he on his app, he comes in and, and assures you, like, keep going. It's going to be okay. <laughs> that is a whole other Ooh, fucking ball that was of dark. Wax. Which leads me to believe, of course, 
that Tim Huff mm -hmm. is possibly four track man. <laughs> Just fucking giving me shit again. Making fun of me for following Wim Hof. Maybe because I am. I'm kind of like I'm kind of a Wim Hof guy. I've been you can it, follow Wim Hof. It's sure, been, it's been like two years. Yeah, since I've been doing. I, I well, do, it's been benefiting you. So. Yes, I do. I do the breath exercises. I do the inhale, exhale, and then I hold for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, I would do it for as long as I could, which was like upwards of six minutes. I'm really proud of that. That sounds crazy. But yeah, I would okay. hold my breath for six minutes, but. Uh, Wow, that's like an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, but I don't do, I don't, now I don't do that because it's, that actually was getting, that takes a lot. That seems weird. Six minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was really, I think at the time I really needed it because it was like, you know, just post pandemic. Did it become like psychedelic after a while? Like that seems crazy. Not really for me. I okay. think some people kind of lose their fucking minds. I think people see visions and all, all that kind of stuff. Like mm. Wim Hof has a really funny part of his when he's doing that. He's like, you are you the seer? <laughs> are you the seer? Do you see visions? But I never, um, I, d I never do that. I'm just like, well, I'm holding my breath for a long time. I just get, it's, it's like it's kind of, it was kind of a jockey impulse of mine. So I've stopped, do, I've stopped like trying to hold my breath. I don't time my breath anymore, and I don't. Mm. I just let it go when I feel like mm -hmm. hey, I don't feel like holding my breath anymore. And it, it still, ha it has a very, it still has the same effect of like calming me down and focusing me for a day. Good. For, okay. Yeah. But that, this uh, Tim Huff. He seems dangerous. Yeah. Like I said this should have like a warning. <laughs> Four track man, you naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> I see, I see little girls walking by the, the window behind you. Izzy's having a play date right now. It's, it's a, it's this like sort of weird, again, this weird week before school begins. Yeah, and I think it's actually, this is an important detail is that this last week is, um, there's no camp <laughs> and there's no school. Yeah. So you're just kind of like floating around. Izzy, Izzy has just like discovered the TV, which is really funny. Like she's eight and, um, she never really watched that much TV a little bit, but now she's like wait, what is this thing? I'm, I can watch movies. She's watching like migration boss baby. She's laughing away. She thinks so funny. And she figures out how to use a remote. So I'm going to go watch TV. And she's very into being independent. And, um, I kind of like it because yeah. it's, it's actually the, it's a really good way to spend some time with your kid that it just involves just sitting on your ass. <laughs> Like you just sit on the couch with your kid and you comment about the TV, whatever you're watching. Mm -hmm. And we watched this fucking abysmal fucking mermaid show the other day. Was it? Mer it's called Mermaid Magic. I think it's this uh, this European Italian. It is. It's animated, new though. It's animated new. feature. I was like, when did they make this? Because it's just super low budget CGI. To me, to my eyes. To your eyes. It seemed low budget CGI, but it was just in it just. Dumb, <laughs> dumb plot line. Everything about it was dumb, and I loved it. For some it. reason, they made all the female characters have the most enormous asses, too, which was really funny. And I am all for representing like all yeah. body types. Yeah, like, the there like, should definitely be pretty, that, but it's, it's this very, is not a normal body it's, type. It's, it was it's like sexualized. What the it's fuck? sexualized to a degree that like you don't see on anything, like on DreamWorks. It was pretty funny. Certainly not Pixar. You know, certainly. I mean, like you rarely see CGI that kind of stuff. That animation so sexualized, unless it's literally like you know. I mean, porn. it was comical. It was like these, yeah. these characters have like but, the narrow little waist and then like yeah, bodacious ass. It was bodacious pretty funny. Bodacious booties. It was and pretty funny, but yeah, I mean, it was nice watching it with it's Izzy. Fun it's you know, it's a yeah. classic family pastime. Yeah, we were just sit yeah, down, just, watch some TV together. Yeah, like and you can uh, you know, hate watching is real fun too. You know. That's a trend. People like it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, and I just hadn't done it in such a long time because the kids really stopped watching TV such a long time ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's all been like computer, like YouTube and stuff like that, and mostly like a an individual, like yeah, a, an individual thing. But this is like a shared experience, and it's pretty, f it's pretty fun. So yeah, we watched uh, three terrible episodes of of <laughs> Mermaid Magic. Mermaid Magic. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'll be sure to. Tag them in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, uh, but yeah, you know what? I, I would like to share something I'm excited about, which like you started to say was the Minnesota State Fair. And I know that I can very much go on and on about that and we'll see how, how I do, but, um, we're going to the Minnesota State Fair on Monday. Today mm. is Wednesday. We're going to go this coming Monday, the last day, Labor Day. We will be at the Minnesota State Fair. If you see us there, say hi. If there's any Minnesota listeners who are also going to be at the great Minnesota get together and you see us wandering around with the hundreds of thousands of people, which that's it actually isn't as crazy as you think because you always run into someone, you know, so. Um, yeah, like the time I ran into. Todd Trainer and Harmar Superstar. Yeah. At wha- the Butter Queen. Yeah. In the dairy building simultaneously. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. It happens. It happens. But so I'm very excited for that. And I just saw that Andrew Zimmerman um, on Substack, I just noticed that he has a Substack. Of course he does. But he just tried all 33 of the new food offerings at the Minnesota State Fair and he ranks them. So. I'm going to go read his post to see new food. Yeah, offerings. they always introduce new booths and new nude new. Ooh. <laughs> this is the nude booth. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that'd be kind of hot. Just like I know, people I'm... naked giving us some food. But yeah, that would be kind of funny if there was like the over eighteen, like you go behind a dark curtain, like yeah. a building, and then all the booths people are serving you are naked. That would be funny. Twenty years from Cheese now, cheese curds. 20 Naked years from people. now, the whole, the adult wing of the Minnesota State Fair. Or they're just wearing like robes, or not robes, uh, aprons, like little strategically placed aprons. I love that look. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> For men and women, all people, you know, just anyone. That's a look I don't know if I've had enough of that. Hmm. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. When's your birthday? <laughs> oh, that just happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited to bring you guys back to the Minnesota State Fair. Izzy hasn't been there since she was. I think we figured it out. It was she was three years old, and then you guys went and saw Weird Al. We um, did. At uh, yeah, you had uh, VIP passes and everything. I got you guys like fourth row to meet and greet weird al and that's when i did the, my one of my most embarrassing moments i know we talked about that like in yeah. one of our very first podcast yeah. episodes uh weird al played just quickly weird al played uh, the song dare to be stupid which mm-hmm. is his devo recreation his cover it's not a cover but it's this incredible tribute to to devo and when we met him for like we got to meet him for like 15 seconds and i said i can't believe you p- played dare to be surprised <laughs> Which is a full complosion song. It's, it's a full complosion album. Oh my god! Oh, what's my own album? Yeah, let me just talk about me. Yeah. Hi, Weird Al. Let me, let me bring let me bring this about and he to just, me. He just kind of looked at me and he went, "Yeah, I did it just for you." <laughs> and then he was really cool. To, he was really cool to Hendrix. Oof. Oh my god. That's so funny. Whatever happened to that lunchbox? Where'd that thing go? It's in his room right now. Closet. None of that paraphernalia went anywhere. Yeah. It's like you you drop like two bills on a paraphernalia, and they just. I think the tickets were maybe a hundred and fifty each. You know, it was like fourth row included, like a meet and greet thing. So with a poster, a lunchbox, a picture with Weird Al. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm, seemed worth it to me. I was totally worth it. It was absolutely 100% worth seemed it. Seemed worth it. And it did it did encourage me to buy even more stuff. Dare you, you know? So I bought even more of his stuff. Dare to buy more things. Yeah. And then I don't know where we haven't figured it out yet, but I'm scheming to try to see Semisonic. They're playing a free concert um two nights in a row, so but the last night we're there and uh, at the Liney Lodge, I think, at the Liney stage. So that's Line and Kugels for y'all, if you don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so I'd like to see that. I don't know. I'm So I'm really excited to strap on my, my Nike foam, air foam sneakers that are really ugly, but have a lot of cushioning and some sensible socks and some sunscreen tromp around the fair. Are you looking forward to being back there? Yes. I like the Minnesota Minnesota State Fair quite a bit. Yeah. What's the baby barn? 
the miracle of life barn. The miracle of life barn. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, where you get to see like little like animals being born. Like there's usually piglets or That's cool. Um yeah, I always like to see the world's biggest pig. I don't want to go to the midway. Oh, okay. I fucking hate midways. Okay. We don't have to go to the midway. Well, I don't know. Whatever. You like you drop like a hundred dollars for tickets and then it's all those dumb games wow well that's not like fun that's not like regional you know those well, are, that stuff is like these create these weird yeah attractions that travel to every state fair in the fucking country and with i'm not these, sure but holland my brother might have a piece of art in there again so we'd have to go see that um if he does he might have a photograph there oh and the well that's in the in the art building. In the, the art building. Yeah. That's not the Midway. I mean, this is, I'm not. No, and I'm, I'm saying if you don't want to go to the Midway, there are things that are local oh, and there. I want to hit all the barns. I want to hit the, se- the I want to hit the seed art. I want to the see. Seed the seed art is amazing. I want to see some quilts. Mm-hmm. I want to see some baby animals. Yeah. I want to eat some. Uh, some soft serve. Some, some soft fresh serve. soft serve from the dairy building. Absolutely. And a corn dog or a prano pup or both. I usually get both because. I pr- thought that the. A the strat- pup is the a- strategy this year was to just get a bunch of stuff and just take a bite of it and throw it away. That's what we're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I'm excusing myself from feeling the guilt over the food waste only because it is the Minnesota State Fair. And, and uh, is, this, is this bad to say this, but everyone's doing it? Like it's all going in the trash? It's all garbage. It's all trash anyway, right? So it's like whether or not I take one bite... And then put the rest in the trash. You guys going to come for me because I do that? Hmm. You know what would be really cool is if they composted all the food. That would be incredible. The big compost get together. Yeah, just like a huge compost pile. Just a massive compost pile. They're coming up with ways to be more environmentally friendly with all of our waste and things like that in Minnesota. And so I wouldn't be surprised if the Minnesota State Fair also is on that tip. Speaking of waste, Holland used to pick up the trash there at the Minnesota State Fair. That was one of his early jobs. The Minnesota State Fair has been a part of your life since, for a very long since time. Since I was a baby. Since you was a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Holland even was in the, he was one of the actors in the haunted house. So I'm hoping that, you know, we're going back to the source. Hopefully no. you can get a little energy. I'm excited. Good time. I'm excited that. for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that concludes another episode of Raw Impressions with Lou Barlow and Adele Barlow. Adele with two L's. I'm Tim Hoff, and it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure to be the announcer for this episode of this amazing podcast. Attempting to expand people's horizons and help them heal. Congratulations, Raw Impressions. Congratulations. (coughs) (laughs) Huff, puff, and blow your life in. Side. Mm. That's four track, man. Definitely. (laughs) Tim Huff. Raw Impressions.